Thank you so much for having me at React Finland. Um, I have the fortunate ev event of being the speaker right after lunch. And uh, it's been two and a half years since I've done a public talk, so I'm a little bit nervous. My name is Norbert Talangen. I am a Storybook maintainer. I focus mostly on the core of Storybook. And I work as a full-time open source maintainer at a company called Chroma, which builds a product called Chromatic, which is a visual review tool based on Storybook. In this talk, I'll show you some of the incredible features that I think uh, will revolutionize how we all uh, do UI testing. And at the end, I'll also have a few sneak peeks about what Storybook 7 might be like. Uh, yeah, so as I said, uh, my name is Norbert Talangen, and I didn't create Storybook uh, myself. In fact, someone else was uh, building it, and while I was consulting in the Netherlands, I just happened to use it and learned that it was abandoned uh, and uh, unmaintained. And I just really wanted to keep existing, so I posted on GitHub that if they were looking for a new maintainer, that I was willing to do it. And um, <laughs> the next morning, I had an email from GitHub stating that I was the new administrator. So I, I want to start my presentation on a depressing note, because that way I give myself some leeway on trying to improve. So building UI, building UIs, it's like really complex, and it's really hard, right? Maybe it's just me, but I just find it really hard. I make all sorts of mistakes all the time. Like we got to account for server-side rendering, router, routing, theming, state management, security. And besides that, we have to think about accessibility, responsive behavior, and so much more. So it is really important that we test our UIs and we test our components so that we can feel confident about building and shipping our UIs so that we can sleep. So who here is testing their components? This is great to see so many people raise their hands. There's a lot to talk about, and I only have 30 minutes. Uh, so there's all sorts of testing that you can do on your UI, but today I have to focus a little bit. So I'll focus on interaction testing. But the story for any test is a bit the same. We have three phases in any test, which is we arrange, we act, and then we assert. So first, we have to get something in a state so that we know it's good. Then we do something to it, and then we assert that the thing that we acted upon now has the other state and that it is correct. So in the React ecosystem, a lot of people seem to be using testing library. Is anyone here using testing library? Again, a lot of hands. The anatomy of an interaction test in, in this world usually looks like you isolate a component and you set it up with certain props, and then you simulate some interactions with testing library, and then you make some assertions using Jest, right? That often looks something like this. This is actually a snippet of uh, a real bit of uh, code that I maintain. And this is the arrange step. And it can be a lot of work. Uh, at least I find it to be quite a bit of work. We've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, we've got a page with modal component. So it's a pretty high level complex component, right? It's a full page. And it needs a bunch of context. It needs the router, and the router needs a URL. It needs the theme, and the theme the provider needs like an actual implementation of that theme, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's a lot of stuff that you need to do in order to get that component to render correctly. Do we know, though, that it's rendering correctly? 
because there's no visual feedback here. We're running, run, we're running this test in jest, and so what do we see? Well, we only see it when the test is either passing or failing. We don't get any visual feedback about what we're doing here. So what if there was a tool with which you can visualize that arrange? Well, that tool exists because that's to me what Storybook is all about. You can create your components and um, create all sorts of variants and states and show them. Storybook is an open source UI workshop environment so that you can build those components in isolation. And it also allows you to document uh, or create like auto-generated documentation so that when you later visit uh, Storybook, you can read about what the other developer uh, intended their component to be able to do. And Storybook is extendable, so you can create all sorts of add-ons or include add-ons from the community and get to do things like playing around with the data that flows into your component right in the uh, Storybook app itself. So final question uh, that I'm gonna ask is, who here uses Storybook? It's really humbling to work on software um, that a lot of people use. It, it's like incredibly motivating to me that uh, I write software and I think it's like pretty bad, but like a lot of people seem to be really liking it and using it. And so another thing that really motivates me a lot is that the fact that Storybook is an open source project maintained by me and a bunch of other colleagues at Chromatic, but also a lot, a lot of open source maintainers that do it out of their own free will, that, that are really happy to collaborate in it with us. And of course, it's used a lot, um, I, I notice, and that actually does put some pressure on uh, how we perceive, like how we do releases and like what uh, we put into releases. Like we're trying to be really careful not to break people's shit. Something that I wanted to talk about uh, before diving into more about the testing is that the fact that I think Storybook is really great for app developers as well. Um, even this talk, it's slotted into the design uh, systems uh, theme, whereas if when I was using Storybook before I started maintaining it, I actually used it on apps only. I wasn't building software, uh, I wasn't building design systems, I was building an app. And I really liked the fact that I could take any component as complex as it were that showed up anywhere in my app, maybe after uh, authentication or after going through a whole bunch of clicks, I could take any of those components and put them somewhere so I can work on them in isolation. And I found that these types of components that are like slightly more complex than like a simple button, uh, you write better components if you start them in isolation first because you have to think about what, it, what makes sense for this component to accept as props. And I think a lot of uh, what I'm, I'll be talking about as well is that uh, when we're thinking about test and the interaction test that I'm going to be showing you is that these patterns are very, very valuable for the higher level components. So here's actually the storybook of Chromatic. You know, the, the Chromatic is a, a software as a service and we maintain all of our components in Storybook, including the ones all the way at the top, like the page level components. So if you've never used Storybook before, or you've been using some of the older APIs, this is what it looks like nowadays to write stories for Storybook. Stories or story files are files, and you put them usually right next to your component source file, and they have a bunch of exports. One of them is special, it's the default export, and you tell Storybook some of the metadata around your component. So here, I've narrowed it down and like really simplified it to the minimal example that I could. Um, 
you can add a bunch of more information to that default export. Like for example, you can help Storybook understand your props better so that we can generate controls. But in general, we have one default export and then we have a bunch of named exports and each named export is a story. And those stories, they uh, end up showing in the sidebar of Storybook so that you can navigate to them. So back to the anatomy of a test. A story is an arrange. It is the setup. And so it makes a lot of sense to not duplicate the work and not duplicate the code. Because if we duplicate the code, that's dirty, but it also creates a massive burden on maintenance. If you change it in one place, it doesn't automatically change in the other. And so what we want to do is reuse our stories and tests. And we can. This is how we do it. First, we import all of our exports from our story file. And then we import this utility function from at storybook slash testing react. And then we simply destructure which story that we want. And now our test has been reduced in size by quite a bit. And I think it's much simpler now. And if there's every, if, there, if there's every, if there's ever any doubt on whether the initial arrange, the setup is correct. You can just go and navigate to the story. And then we get this. We get passing tests, which is awesome. I like it when tests pass. I don't like it when tests fail. And I don't like it because debugging failing tests is hard. At least, maybe it's just me, but I don't find that parsing HTML in a command line is a really good experience. My brain is just not really capable of it, especially at Friday. And if you've got SVGs in your components, oh boy. It feels a little bit like playing a text adventure game on your PS5. I guess like it works and it could be really fun, but you know, the thing is capable of graphics, let's use it. So what if you could run the same test but in a browser instead. Well, we call it storybook testing, and you can use it today. So you can now write interaction tests on your stories and then have them run in storybook. And it's powered by Playwright and testing library and Jest. And so what you can do is when you navigate to the story and it mounts, it renders, then we invoke your, func your play function, and it's an asynchronous function that can do many things, one of which is, for example, clicking a button. So here we have a component which sole purpose is to render a button, and then if you click it, open a modal. Now previously, if we didn't have the play function and this component, you would have to write like an additional prop to you, like if you wanted to show it off with the modal open, you would have to like in enforce that in the API of the button, even if your app never used it that way. So with the play function, you can get components in certain states without touching the component code at all. And you can basically mimic what a user would be doing to your component in order to see it in the state that it would end up in. And as I said, it's powered by testing library and Jest. So you can pretty much use all of the tools that you're already familiar with. But there's more. Because running the test, it's nice. Having the arrange and the act uh, all happening in Storybook, that's awesome. We can even write our assertions. But it would be nice if there was visual feedback of what the test is currently doing. And that's why we've built the interactions add-on into Storybook. And so at the bottom here, you can see a panel 
where it displays that it's currently about to do something, and then it does it, you can see the component updates, and the panel at the bottom says, your test pass. So taking this a little bit further, we can show you the progress of this test, but we can even do more than that. We can time travel. So you can click on any of these steps and go effectively back in time and see exactly what is happening to your component, what is happening in your test. Now, spoiler alert, it's not actually traveling in time. So when you try and go back in history, we actually just unmount the component, remount it, and render from the start again. But don't tell anyone. So when I said that this pattern is the most powerful on like higher level components, this is what I mean. This is almost a full app component for a to-do app. And you can run and it, you can write pretty much an end-to-end -end test almost on your component. And Storybook will display it, and you can navigate it in time. Now, of course, navigating to each story so that you can see those play functions run, that's not going to cut it. Like, that's manual work. And we're developers. We don't like manual work. So we've written a test runner. And this test runner takes all of your stories as its input. And if they have a play function, it will mount a component and play the play function and expect it to pass. If you don't have a play function, it will still render the component for you and just assert that it didn't throw. Yeah, so it's, it checks for rendering issues, which actually does kind of happen, at least to me sometimes. Uh, I'm working on some lower level component update its API, and something higher up breaks. And there would be no way for me to know other than either using Chromatic or something like this, a test runner. All right, but we're kind of back to the command line, right? And the command line, if things fail, that experience wasn't all that great. Well, we don't have to stay in the command line because Storybook ran in an actual browser. And it's the test runner that is talking to this browser using Playwright. And so when some things are wrong, we can generate a link for you to click. And it takes you to Storybook. And you can uh, end up in the exact state that the browser or the test runner uh, looked at and failed. And now you can click on the previous states, open up DevTools, place a debugger, and see exactly what is going on. And you don't need to have this running on your local machine at all. If this is running in CI and your CI has uh, artifacts, you can use this right from there. And you don't need to check out the branch and get it all set up and install, et cetera. And Playwright is multi-browser. So we can actually do this with multiple browsers. You can even do it at the same time in parallel. And one of our goals of Storybook is that it is really extensible, extendable, and it allows you to add all sorts of add-ons. And Display Runner is no different. So we allow you to run certain functions before or at, uh, right before the play function or right after the play function. And so what you can do is I don't know, ask the browser to take a snapshot before running the play function, and then ask the browser to take a snapshot after and see what the difference is, uh, make some assertions on those. Uh, you can also run additional or other tools like Axe for accessibility tests. So the anatomy of a test, a story was originally only in a range, but now it's really become all three. And in fact, I think this would remove the need for a lot of unit tests that we write. Uh, we can run them and write them right in our stories. So we've written a handbook on uh, all of this and more. 
uh, including on how to, imp how to improve writing stories, what type of stories to write for what type of components. And it's all in this UI testing handbook that we've written and is publicly available for free. All right. I am well ahead of time, by the way. But we'll have plenty of time for questions, I guess. Um, yeah, so I also told you that I'm going to be showing some cool new things from Storybook 7, right? Um, but you're going to be disappointed because uh, there is no new features pretty much in Storybook 7. And the reason is we've kind of already shipped them in 6.5. Uh, they're all behind feature flags, so you can opt into them today. But we are doing some major overhauls in Storybook 7. I mean, we have to. It's been, like, what, two years since our last breaking release? Maybe two and a half. And so I am really happy to announce that in Storybook 7, we're going to be modern first, which means we're going to be targeting Chrome version 100, which is, like, I think from February or so. So it's, a, it's a, on the safe side. And it means we can just run ESM in the browser because that's, that's supported there. We're going to need zero polyfills. And we are doing a lot of work on the internals on the core to make sure it's uh, using the more modern stuff to build. Uh, so the manager side of Storybook, which is the UI you see, like the side panel, all of that is going to be pre-bundled using ESBuild. And we're also adding first class Vite support for the preview, uh, which is the part where your code actually runs. And it means, and I'm absolutely not sad to say, that IE will just not be supported anymore, and neither will Webpack 4. People will have to migrate up to Webpack 5, or maybe even to Vite. And because we're going modern, that means like we automatically get a lot of performance benefits. So I didn't list them here. Um, but additionally, besides shipping far less code because like it's more modern, we can also now lazy load all of your stories. So previously in story in the default setup in Storybook 6.5, we bundle all of your storybook, uh, all of your stories in pretty much a single bundle, which can be megabytes in larger storybooks. And it means that Webpack or whatever other builder you're using needs to do a lot of work up front. And yeah, Webpack 5 has an experimental feature, which is called lazy compilation. It's currently quite experimental. But we allow you to set that up in Storybook. And we've seen massive performance improvements based on it. Uh, I, I mean, like going from a 30 second build to a two second build, like really drastic improvements. And because everything is or can be lazy compiled and it can also be lazy loaded. One of our other goals is stories everywhere. Uh, so I've already talked about stories in test, also about tests in stories. Um, but I suspect it's not for every use case that you want the test to be written in Storybook. So there's going to be plenty of cases where you want to have your stories in your test instead, and that's fine. Another place where we want you to be reusing your Storybooks or your stories is in your docs. Uh, so I know some of you might question, like, but doesn't Storybook try to be your documentation? And the answer is to some degree, yes. But on, on some level, no. Uh, we know that Storybook isn't the end all documentation generator. Uh, it, it, if you want something for your custom company that's like all yours, then yeah, you want to write your own documentation site and be proud of it and make it work for your organization. And that's perfectly fine. So we want you to be able to import your stories and put them in your docs. And in 7.0, we're targeting for Next.js support so that you can import your stories and show them in Next. Um, but we want it to be not React specific and um, pretty much support any website. 
And another thing that we really want, like Sarah, thank you for the joke about Storybook for PHP. Um, but we genuinely think that Storybook is an amazing tool that brings many communities together, like React, but any other renderer. That's what we call frameworks. So that includes Solid, or maybe Quick, or whatever else is on the horizon. We're like really open. Um, this is kind of like where I gotta end my talk, I guess, on, on somewhat of a depressing note, because like I can't maintain all of that. I, I, I can't. I have to maintain about nine renderers at the moment, and that's a lot. Uh, and if you think that's a lot, then like, well, actually, I try to support them in such a way that it's backwards compatible, and that includes like Angular version six, seven and up, up to 14. And it's hard. It is really incredibly hard to maintain all of that. And that's why uh, I can't probably add support for Svelte or, or Svelte we got for Solid. Um, but that's really where I'm hoping that people like you, as like part of why I talk at conferences, is that I hope to meet people that are also enthusiastic about Storybook, about open source, uh, so that we can all collaborate and build much better software. So thank you. <laughs>